Once in a while Someone comes along That one in a million heart So pure and so strong A son, brother, husband, father, grandfather, uncle, friend, infielder, outfielder, pitcher, coach, manager, scout, farm director, and baseball executive. Melvin Douglas Crean had been all of them and had the distinction of having entered the major leagues as an outfielder and finishing as a pitcher. The son of a former major leaguer, Mel was born on March 26, 1942 in Johnson City, New York. His parents were of Dutch, English, Scottish, and Italian descent. Someone has the eyes That one in a million look Mel attended San Luis Obispo High School and was a three-letter athlete. During his sophomore year, Mel played at both quarterback and halfback for the football team and being able to jump, played center on the basketball team. In the end, Mel decided to devote his time and talents to baseball and in his senior year, he batted 425 and was named the team's most valuable player. A 1960 graduate, Mel was twice named All-League and All-California Interscholastic Federation shortstop, and in June 1960 he was drafted by the Cincinnati Reds for a reported $100,000 plus a Corvette. As a rookie I bragged I could knock a ball over the moon This old veteran pitcher I'm in a much different tune His nickname was Fireball And that's what he sent to the plate I went to the dugout Wiping the egg off my face It's hero or bum And you never know which one you'll be When you need a home run, the umpire might holler strike three. That old fickle finger of fate rules our destiny. It's hero or bum, and we never know which one will be. I spent the summer of 95 warming the bench In the final game I was the only man left in the pinch I was frozen by two strikes then the bat came alive in my hands I hit meant the pennant Bum again, I only fan It's hero or bum And we never know which one we'll be We are indeed talking baseball with the manager of the Syracuse Sky Chiefs. He is Mel Queen. Mel, great to have you here. Mm-hmm. Mel, let's talk a little bit uh, about your background and how you uh, got uh, started in this game of ours. Your dad actually played at the major league level, if I'm right. Yeah, he pitched for the Yankees and the Pirates. And that and goes I used, back a few years. Yeah, and I used to go to the ballpark all the time, little ballpark rat out there. But, <laughs> uh, and that's where I think, you know, I had this desire to play sure. baseball started there. Yeah, so you've been in baseball all your, all your life. Practically, yeah. Broke in in the early 60s. Right. Pitched with Cincinnati, I believe. And but then, broke uh, in not as a pitcher. Right, it's kind of a unique story. I, I went up to the big leagues as an outfielder and... Uh, in all honesty, wasn't a, a bad player. I was a pretty good player. But there was uh, some people in the outfield, uh, Tommy Harper, Veda Pinson, and Frank Robinson. That was a great outfield. Yeah, time, and, sure. and yeah. Yeah, you know, Frank, no room for you. <laughs> Frank, Frank was the oldest at 27. Right. And, <laughs> and uh, they'd all hit 300. They all had yeah. over 20 home runs. So I this, sat on the this bench. This is going to be a tough lineup to crack. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so I sat on the bench and watched baseball. And, you know, <laughs> it was a good seat. Yeah, I had a free ticket. You know, I got in every day free. So uh, one day, one of our hitters, Darren Johnson, was in a slump. And he wanted someone to throw batting practice to him so I said well I'll, I'll throw to you and he wanted someone to throw hard so I was out throwing hard 
And Darren was a great hitter, but he couldn't hit a high fastball. Mm -hmm. Well, I wasn't intentionally throwing the ball high. That's just where I threw. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, so he was swinging and missing, fouling mm -hmm. balls off. So pretty soon the pitching coach came over. He watched. <laughs> then the manager came over and he watched. So who is this kid? <laughs> so after I got through, uh, they said, uh, and I, I had talked to him earlier about letting me pitch because I wasn't mm -hmm. playing. Mm -hmm. And I said, you know, we're getting blown out eight, ten <laughs> runs down. Let me pitch and save the bullpen. Sure. So after, then, after they watched me throw batting practice, the uh, manager said, are you serious about pitching? I said, yeah. What else? I'm not doing anything else. <laughs> so uh, about a week later, uh, Dave said, go down the bullpen. Now, I used to warm up pitchers down there, too, because when sure. you didn't play, you had to do everything. Right, That's true. Right. So uh, I said, well, who do you want up? He said, you. I said, me. He goes, yeah, you're going to pitch the last inning. And we were getting beat by 10 runs by the Cardinals. So I went in and pitched the last inning. And uh, I struck out the side. I'd like to say it was because I was good. <laughs> but those guys were, you know, as far back in the batter's box as they could get. Because, you know, <laughs> that's how they made their living. Here's an outfielder coming in throwing hard. Right. You know, they wanted no part of it. Right. If it's I true. could just find home plate, <laughs> I, I would get them out. Yeah. Right, right. Oh, that was probably, if I remember right, back in the days before batting helmets, too. So they probably did want to Close. stay out of the way. <laughs> Interesting story. So you didn't do your thousand innings in the minors before <laughs> no. that. Uh, no. no way. In the yeah. last 10 seconds, Dave, have to ask, toughest player you ever played against? Willie Mays. Ah, uh, I can understand Good that. answer, yeah. Indeed. <laughs> Great show. It's been a lot of fun, hasn't it? Mel Queen, manager of the Syracuse Sky Chiefs, thanks so much for coming over this morning. Uh, thank you. We have to find out a way to get through to each player. The longer you're with the player, the more you get to know him, get to know his personality, and that's where your managers and coaches really are important, to understand what gets through to this player. The bottom line is they are our number one priority. Everybody in this room can be replaced in five minutes. You're not going to replace players with potential. There's just not that many around. So our job is to figure out whatever it takes to motivate these players and to make them better players. Keep your hands right there. Now as you turn, then bring your hands down. My strength is speed, and I'm a pretty good hitter. And defensive-wise, I'm pretty good. All right. One more. My liabilities are bunting for a base hit and reading pictures, not hitting and fielding. Just the little things that people don't know is what players have to do. If the player can evaluate himself, I think he retains those things a little bit better. Just like when you talk to a pitcher, you go, you know, what are you doing wrong? If that pitcher can pick out what he's doing wrong, he'll retain that a hell of a lot longer than a pitching coach going out and saying, hey, this is what you're doing. That way, you're getting your point across without more or less telling him, boy, you really screwed up. Make them use their head a little bit. You're getting up here where you're almost in a strike zone, and you could really get hit by a strike. And we don't want you to get hit, period. But, you know, you gotta, you got to get plate coverage, but you got to make sure that... Former Major here. Leaguer yeah, Mel Queen is in charge of all coaches, managers, and players in the Blue Jays minor league system. He decides who moves up, down, or out. Okay, try a couple more. All right, very good. Mel Queen's assessment of Shannon, Harry, and Eddie is critical. He'll assign them to one of seven Blue Jay minor league teams. Adam can maintain his stuff. By doing this, he does. why not do it all Twice the time? during the season, Mel Queen and his five rope.